Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, the first keynote speaker, Ms. Śnieżka Kwatflich Michailowicz. Hello, Śnieżka. I good hope morning that, to you. Good morning. I hope that we, you can hear and see that we can see each other. Uh, I'm very grateful that you uh, agreed to, to, to contribute to our forums. Um, I, it's, it's quite difficult for me to, to present uh, Snieżka because it's such a great personality that it's, it's, it is impossible to just say in a few words, but um, uh, Snieżka Kwedlich Mihailowicz is the Secretary General of Europa Nostra. She was designated for that position in the year 2000. And I think that uh, since then, and especially in the recent years, it's, it's just thanks to, to her personal involvement and engagement that the voice of cultural heritage is being heard louder and louder in, uh, in Europe and also outside Europe. Uh, she has an enormous uh, skill to mobilize, uh, to mobilize people, to, to, to encourage them uh, um, to act. Uh, Snieżka will present a very, very important paper that was recently um, uh, presented and, and, and created by Europa Nostra together with ICOMOS, a Climate Heritage Network, and with support of European Investment Bank Institute, uh, that entitled European Culture Heritage Green Paper. Uh, in the foreword, Hermann Parzinger, the president of Europa Nostra, writes that responding effectively to climate change is the defining task of our time. So uh, I, I think that especially recent year uh, makes us really aware of the fact that uh, the responsibility of tackling Climate issues is responsibility of all of us, and especially the sector of, of cultural heritage has an important role to play in this process. So, um, once again, Snieżka, thank you very much for, for uh, being with us this morning. Uh, your, your presentation, putting cultural heritage at the heart of European Green Deal, uh, we will be able to listen to in a moment. And uh, I have a, um, just small uh, suggestion to all people watching us to, um, to um, write your comments and questions and we will be able after the presentation maybe makes, have some short discussion. Snieszka, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um Dear um, uh, Agatha, uh, uh, um, can I just um, ask you to remove at the beginning the slides because I just want to see you full screen uh, before I start presenting the paper. Uh, I just want a few minutes uh, of, of introduction if it's possible, otherwise we, we, we remain like this. Yeah, so thank you, thank you. I want to see you. I want to see you because I want to address you and, and all through you, all the, the colleagues and friends from Central Europe and, um, and beyond who are attending this extremely important forum organized by the International Cultural Center in Krakow. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the 10th anniversary of this forum. In fact, it's the sixth forum, but because it is a biannual, yes, the first yes. one you organized exactly you 10 years right. ago. But not only this is the 10th anniversary of um, uh, that you're organizing this forum, it is the 30th anniversary a year of the ICC. And I just first want from The Hague, where the headquarters of Europa Nostra are located, I want to send you a um, big hug, a lot of kisses, and a lot of encouragement for the next 30 years of, uh, um, uh, of your extraordinary uh, work. You were very kind to tell me that I have the skill to mobilize people, but I would never, and Europa Nostra would never be able to do that if we would not be able to count on partners and members like your own organizations. It, the energy comes from you, from, uh, from the network that you have brought and you are definitely de facto, uh, we consider you as being our regional hub in, in Central Europe. You have a 
gathered such an extraordinary network um, in this part of Europe, and we are very, very appreciative and very grateful for the work you have been doing. And um, and indeed, when I speak uh, with you all, I feel that I am among friends. I'm at home, uh, in a sense. Uh, so yeah, you are gathering uh, Central Europe. Uh, my origin is from Belgrade uh, and, and from Southeast Europe. And I think we jointly have a very important uh, mission. And that mission is to all the time remind um, the institutions and civil society that the process of reunification of Europe has far from uh, finished. And uh, perhaps the markets reunified, but uh, at the level of the memories, on the minds, of the culture, on the values, we still have a lot to do. And uh, uh, the region of Central Europe and Southeast Europe is equally important as the region of Western Europe. And so I think there we really have an extremely important uh, mission uh, in order to make sure that our Europe is complete and as united uh, as possible. Um, also, I want to say that, um, that in fact, I, we are among friends, but we are also among partners because uh, we have, with ICC, developed extraordinary partnership. And I'm so proud that we have jointly produced some groundbreaking documents. Um, to start with, um, with uh, the, um, the Cultural Heritage Counts for Europe document, it has somehow become the Bible. Uh, it has become uh, published in 2015, six organization and ICC, an important partner. Um, it has become really a sort of uh, a game changer, a I game would say. Changer, yes. uh, in, a game changer, yes. A game changer in European policy making. Uh, from there on, everybody started talking about holistic approach to measuring the value of uh, cultural heritage. Until then, it was mostly focusing on economic value. We came with that document and we clearly said that uh, heritage is at the heart of sustainable development. The title of your forum is Heritage and Development. It's not any development, sustainable development. And we wanted to qualify that development and say that cultural heritage is at the heart of, of, of what sustainable sustainability and sustainable development is about. And we showed how much the multiple benefits, positive benefits of cultural heritage for economy, society, environment, and, and, and of course for culture and our identity. So that was, and that we, we ser that served in fact also for lobbying, for getting in 2018, the European year yeah, of, of cultural heritage. heritage. So we very much hope, some, the paper that I will present to you today, that it will hopefully have the same impact, that it will become also a game changer, both for policy making and for us, the uh, heritage stakeholders from academic world to the um, activists and, 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 and civil society organization. And I consider myself more as being on that side, a sort of a spokesperson for the civil society and for the activists uh, and lobbyists for, for, for cultural heritage. So um, just to end this, this uh, short introduction, um, I, guess I, I, I am sure you will agree with me. Who would have thought when 30 years ago you started ICC, I, I started working for Europa Nostra 30 years ago, so sort of we started the journey um, together. Who would have thought that 30 years later, we will find ourselves, first of all, that I will be speaking to you in this way, that I would not be with you uh, in Krakow, and uh, that we will be facing an enormous uh, series of, of emergencies and crises, very fundamental crises for our economy. Of course, the health crisis. I don't have to say something. We are all living it and, and, and sort of speaking only about that. But we are, we are, the light is out of, we see the light out of the tunnel and we are busy sort of now talking about the post pandemic recovery. Economic crisis, of course, related, with, it was existing before, but it has become even bigger because yes. of the pandemic. We have the climate emergency, and that's what we are going to focus today. And we have also the emergency of values. We all know how much all around the world and including in Europe, the values, the fundamental values that are uh, underpinning the European project is also under attack. So we have so many emergencies to tackle and cultural heritage is in fact a part of the response 
and an extremely important resource that we have, something that we share and that we have a shared responsibility to tackle. But as I said, today, we are not going to tackle all those emergencies, but we are going to focus on the issue of, of, of climate emergency. Uh, and uh, and the um, European Union, as you know, has responded to um, the climate emergency by publishing in 2019 the European Green Deal. And uh, we, the cultural world in Europe, we thought um, that it is important to repair a grave omission. Because as you know, the European Green, Faith, uh, Green Deal does not mention the word culture. Culture is nowhere in, yes. in, in that whole, um, in that whole uh, program. And so we felt that we had to get organized and we have to sort of get our voice heard to show that we are part of the mobilization for the green transformation and climate action in Europe and beyond on a global scale. And that's why we have produced the European um, Cultural Heritage Green Paper. And it is my honor to present uh, this paper to you as an opening uh, to um, the forum that you are organizing um, this year. So now I kindly ask you to, um, uh, to put the, the, the slides and I will sort of uh, um, uh, invite you to, to a journey and guide you through uh, this document. So we will first begin, um, so let me, uh, let, I think we have to go uh, another slide. Have we? Aha, uh, uh -huh. I have got the internet clicker so I can do it myself. I'm just going to open it. I think I can. Yes, it works. Fantastic. Um, so um, we will, um, I will first uh, explain to you the wider policy context of our green paper. Uh, then I will um, give you the sort of the summary of the general uh, information uh, about the paper and uh, some key messages. Then uh, I would explain to you what we are going to do with that paper, how we intend to have an advocacy um, and also how we, we intend to communicate this green paper. And of course, we will end up um, uh, with, with a question, what next? Uh, what, is, uh, what are the next steps that all together we can uh, do? So we are starting with a wider policy context. Um, what is the European Green Deal all about? The European Green Deal is the EU strategy to make Europe a climate neutral continent by 2050. And it is an ambitious response to the climate crisis and also aims to make Europe a champion on this issue, not just in Europe, but uh, worldwide. You can see here, um, um, please let me see, does it work, does it work? Oh gosh, these new technologies. Um, yes, now in the screen you can read a, a quote by Franz Timmermans, the Executive Vice President of the European Commission in charge of the European Green Deal expressing in a nutshell what the Green Deal is about. The European Green Deal must put Europe on the right track to a sustainable future and ensure that every European is on board and that no one is left behind. So that is extremely important words. No one should be left behind. Um, responding effectively to climate change is indeed the defining task of our time. The effects of climate change are visible in every corner of the world, and the scope and speed of this phenomenon are ever more evident and alarming. This is particularly the case in Europe, a small continent with a very high population density and a strong interdependence between people and their living environment. And the rich and diverse landscape of our continent is also deeply intertwined with cultural heritage, be it tangible or intangible, urban or rural, inland or coastal. Climate change consequently affects the people and their living and working environments alike. The pressing climate emergency is currently taking place amid an unprecedented health crisis, as I have already mentioned, caused by the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. In such a context, an extraordinary challenge calls for extraordinary collective mobilization and action. And we, 
Europa Nostra and our wide network of members and partners applaud the strong commitment of the European Union to place the, the, uh, the European uh, Green Deal at the very heart of Europe's socio and economic recovery in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. But we need to do so much more. We have to act faster and we have to act more resolutely. And every individual, every professional and economic sector, every policy realm can do its bit to counter the climate and environmental emergency. And this is why Europa Nostra has recognized climate action as a key priority in our policy agenda. We have supported and are active members of the Climate Heritage Network, and we have proudly contributed to the United Nations Climate Summit in September 2019. And our Green Paper confirms this strategic goal and commitment. Why? Already, because I said climate action is our collective responsibility to keep global warming under 1,5 Celsius and thus avoiding devastating consequences for our planet and humankind, including cultural heritage, we all need to play our part. And therefore, Europa Nostra, together with all of you, with the heritage world of Europe, are saying, please count cultural heritage in. And this is precisely the message of our European Green Paper, putting Europe's shared heritage at the heart of the European Green Deal. This Green Paper was produced in collaboration with ICOMOS and the Climate Heritage Network with the support of the European Investment Bank Institute and the input of the European Heritage Alliance that Europa Nostra is uh, proud and happy to coordinate. After um, a full year amidst of lockdown of extensive research, consultation and policy analysis, this much awaited paper was presented to the public during a successful uh, virtual, uh, virtual event on 27 March 2021, so um, a little bit more than two months ago, with uh, almost three months ago. And we had more than 550 attendees from all over the world and outstanding speakers such as uh, our executive president, uh, Hermann Patzinger, Teresa Patricio, president of ICOMOS. We are very proud that this document is a co-production between ICOMOS and, and Europa Nostra, and he's very much inspired by um, uh, the pioneering document that ICOMOS has produced uh, um, um, a little bit earlier uh, on in 2019 uh, with regard to, to the global picture and the global climate action and cultural heritage. We also had the participation of uh, Francisco de Paola Coelho, Dean of the European Investment Bank Institute, a very important partner of Europa Nostra, and last but not least, I hope you recognize her, the, the smiling and supporting face of uh, European Commissioner Maria Gabriel, who is extremely, extremely forceful leader uh, uh, now in the European Commission led by Ursula von der Leyen and championing the cultural heritage concerns and importance uh, throughout the policies of, of the European Union. So we also had the members of the European Parliament with us, uh, Dacia Melbarte from um, Latvia and Marcos Rossempere from Spain. So somehow all institutions and the whole of Europe uh, were gathered uh, there uh, to hear, um, to rally somehow behind the messages of this document. Um, we believe that this is a pioneering paper the first ever to correlate cultural heritage to the European Green Deal. And, uh, and as I said, it is the result always, we can't do anything without solid partnership between important organization. And like the Cultural Heritage Council Europe was done in partnership, including with ICC, this is the partnership with uh, ICOMOS and, and the Climate Heritage Network. So now, what are the key messages of this green paper? This paper shows that the European Green Deal and cultural heritage are closely and fundamentally interconnected. Um, all key areas of the Green Deal, such as the circular economy, the renovation wave, uh, renewal, uh, renewable energy, energy efficiency of farm to fork, have strong cultural and cultural heritage implications. 
and our paper, uh, very uh, sort of chapter by chapter, is demonstrating that. Cultural heritage is also severely threatened by global warming, as you all know. Let me just mention two uh, very obvious uh, examples. Uh, two world heritage sites that are severely in danger because of uh, many, many uh, issues, but in particular climate change. Venice and its lagoon in Italy, or the island of Delos and the world heritage site of Delos in Greece. And they are both severely threatened by rising sea levels. For this reason, we must improve and expand the modeling of the projected impacts of climate change on cultural resources and use this evidence to guide decision making at all levels from local to European and global. Heritage is indeed in danger because of climate change, but it is also part of the solution. And that is the core message of our document. We were not there. The document is not there to sort of uh, um, uh, to 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 uh, how shall I say the, to to cry uh, for help, but rather the opposite to say in order to succeed the Green uh, Deal, you need you need cultural heritage and you need to tap in the opportunities and positive uh, of, um, possibilities offered by cu uh, cultural heritage. From reusing heritage buildings to using traditional agricultural know-how to support sustainable food system, cultural heritage can support the transition towards a healthier, greener, and fairer future. And for this potential to be unleashed, all climate strategies must incorporate social and cultural aspects. In particular, cultural heritage can contribute to the ambitions of the European Green Deal through the following characteristics, which are unique to the heritage world and could bring a real added value. On the slide, you see these key, key um, notions, the notions of togetherness, longer time scales, culture of reuse and stewardship, embedded knowledge. Very key words and key concepts that uh, um, sort of show how much uh, heritage is relevant for uh, the success of the Green Deal. Let's start with the notion of togetherness. Heritage is more than a significant creator of jobs across Europe. It is also what brings Europeans together. Europeans take pride in cultural heritage. And uh, this is exactly the message of the essay Togetherness. I'm going to show that essay to you, uh, published by our executive president, Herman Patziger, president, uh, executive president of Europa Nostra. And it was published, very important, by the European Investment Bank in the collection Big Ideas. So we have the European Investment Bank as our ally, and that feels good. Uh, this connection can also be the link for the European citizens to the European Green Deal and the basis of our common and greener future. Longer time scales. The fields of climate and heritage policy are born accustomed to working with multi-decadal and even longer time scales. And that is, of course, something that heritage is, is all about. Heritage conservation promotes also culture of reuse and stewardship. That is the antithesis to the consumer society ethos of single use disposability. Last but not least, the collections of European libraries and the knowledge embedded in the European heritage evidence past adaptation to change and can illustrate the causes of climate change and also illustrate the responses to climate change. How is our green paper structured? You see whether it works. Yes. Um, paper correlates the contribution of cultural heritage to all key areas of the European Green Deal, as I mentioned, including through real case examples or case studies. It proposes a series of concrete recommendations, both for policymakers and for cultural heritage stakeholders. There are also potential conflicts, either real 
or perceived between heritage safeguarding and climate action. These include, for example, the placement of solar panels on historic buildings or the siting of industrial wind farms in cultural landscapes or um, sensitive um, uh, urban or rural environments, or the renovation of, histor of historic buildings for energy efficiency and their potential negative impact on due conservation of their heritage values. Our Green Paper reflects the firm conviction that in the case of such tensions, win-win scenarios are both desirable and attainable. Due to time constraints, I cannot mention in detail all the chapters of the paper, which represent each one of the elements of the Green Deal. But let me give you only three examples, which I consider relevant and important for Central Europe and for the theme of today's conference. First of all, let me, uh, some examples, let me focus on um, building and renovating in an energy and resource efficient way. This is a key element of the European Green Deal. Why? Because buildings are responsible for about 40% of the EU's total energy consumption. If the EU is to achieve its ambitions, as laid down in the European climate law, buildings um, uh, emissions should be reduced by 60% by 2030. To address this need, in October 2020, the Commission presented this renovation wave of Europe strategy. While the renovation wave correctly mentions the need to safeguard heritage values, our Green Paper suggests that cultural heritage can do more. It can support and accelerate the achievement of its objectives. Cultural heritage focuses not only on structures, but also on the mindsets and behaviors behind the ways people build and use buildings in order to understand their social function, durability, and capacity to adapt. It embodies time-tested technologies, the product of place-adapted innovation that still offer contemporary climate solutions. And to succeed, the renovation wave must embrace these cultural dimensions of the built environment. Technical assistance, support of next generation skilled craft workers and enhancing skills and know-how in traditional design and construction will be needed to unleash this potential. Internalizing the co-benefits of heritage conservation, such as supporting social cohesion, well-being, creativity, tourism and intercultural dialogue would also help deliver participatory and neighborhood-based approaches. This is also the, the, the place that I want to um, say something about the new European Bauhaus initiative. I'm sure you have all heard about that and perhaps you are also part of that initiative as partner. We as Europa Nostra were very um, proud to have been selected as one of the first partners of this initiative and we were there to remind that if we're talking about more sustainable building environment and living environment, of course we must take cultural heritage concerns into account. And, um, and that's why uh, we uh, have presented, in fact, this document as our contribution to the co-designing of the principles of the new European Bauhaus. We also are engaging with a campaign for high quality Baukultur for Europe um, that started during the European Year of Cultural Heritage in 2018 with the declaration, uh, Davos Declaration adopted um, uh, in January 2018. And we believe that in our paper, the principles of the Davos process and declaration all benefit the new European Bauhaus. And the new European Bauhaus, in fact, is a cultural dimension of the implementation of the European Green Deal. Let me now turn to, um, uh, have I, yes, um, the other example, from farm to folk. The ambition to achieve fair, healthy, and environmentally friendly food system. The European Green Deal's farm to fork strategy aims to make European food the global standard for sustainability. The current farm to fork strategy does not, however, expressly address European agricultural 
gastronomical and food heritage. Um, Europe's traditional agricultural knowledge and craft know-how can help ensure sustainable food production, decarbonize food production, reduce chemical pesticides, um, save water, and promote greater animal welfare. Traditional seeds and breeds are also part of Europe's cultural capital and enhance agricultural biodiversity. Incorporating the cultural traditions and preferences of Europe's diverse regions, as well as the health benefits of traditional European diets, would advance these goals, enhancing the cultural identity and continuity of local communities. So this is also something that Europe and Austria until now have not been dealing sufficiently with. And uh, we have also in 2018 produced uh, um, in partnership a document, Food is Culture. So this is definitely something that we have to bring very much into the heart of our um, uh, European and global mobilization for cultural heritage, the heart of sustainable development, the heart of climate action. Let me go for the third example, uh, the third chapter that I would like to sort of just uh, go a little bit, uh, a little bit more deeper. Uh, accelerating the shift to sustainable and smart mobility. Transport accounts for a quarter of the EU's greenhouse gas emissions. And this figure is still growing. To achieve climate neutrality, the European Green Deal calls for a 90% reduction in transport emissions by 2050. Sustainable transport relates to more affordable, accessible, healthier, and cleaner alternatives to mobility habits. It concerns our mobility culture, including our travel behavior. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, mass tourism had become a heavy burden and even a threat to some historic cities, as well as cultural and natural heritage sites. Venice is a striking example, but if I'm not mistaken, uh, Krakow is also one of the uh, sort of extraordinary success stories and a magnet for people to visit and also uh, sort of bringing, uh, uh, brought at least the, before the pandemic, a very, very high pressure from tourism on the sustainable management uh, uh, of, of the city. To accomplish the goals of the European Green Deal, we need a new European strategy for more sustainable and responsible tourism that combines measures to reduce the risks of mass tourism with efforts to reduce its carbon footprint. Working with culture and tourism stakeholders would help achieve this goal while emphasizing sustainable tourism approaches that allow cultural destinations to generate positive economic and social benefits for local communities. As a starting point, there is an immediate need to redefine and expand the use of and the tools for monitoring and measuring uh, the greenhouse uh, um, um, gas emissions attributable to tourism, including cultural uh, attractions. Some ways to reduce uh, the greenhouse um, um, gas uh, emissions from cultural tourism is by promoting regional lower carbon itineraries, slow travel, and tourism as a cultural and learning experience. Sustainable mobility solutions to access tourism destinations and new strategies that develop alternative storytelling on how to discover and rediscover territories, generating higher quality experiences and enjoyment for visitors and for locals should also be explored. And digitalization of art and cultural heritage can play an important role in reducing uh, greenhouse um, um, gas emissions. Of course, investments in digital services and infrastructures are needed. These are just a few of the ways in which cultural heritage can support the European Green Deal. I invite you to read the paper here it is in my hand, this paper. Uh, it has an executive summary um, uh, of, of about a dozen of pages, but it is all, and then you have the full paper of about 60 pages. I invite you, at least the executive summary, study it very carefully, but I think I 
I just guarantee you that it's worthwhile also reading the full paper, disseminating it as widely as possible through your own network. And also please comment. We also want to hear your comments. We want to receive your, perhaps some examples, your experiences. Um, criticism is welcome, of course, as usual, but we uh, believe that this is just the beginning. This is not the end of the process. It is the beginning of our mobilization for um, putting cultural heritage at the heart of the implementation of the European Green Deal. How are we going to do that? Now, we go to advocacy and communication. With our green paper, we wish to provide a policy and advocacy framework for the mobilization of the heritage community for climate action. And for this, we are committed to widely disseminate this important paper among heritage circles and policymakers. And this opportunity is a fantastic opportunity for this wide dissemination and for the exchange. An important step towards its dissemination and a larger uptake is a translation into several European languages. And the full paper and executive summary has been translated already into Spanish. It will soon be publicly available. Other translations are in the pipeline, uh, and these are Portuguese, French, German, and Italian. And knowing our friends from ICC, I would not be surprised that soon we will also have the Polish translation. We already have a fantastic Polish designer who is now has become the designer of all our documents and uh, publications, but perhaps we will also have the Polish and other languages of Central Europe will follow as well. Of course, uh, as I said, uh, if there is a volunteering somebody uh, in, uh, in the audience, please get in touch with us and thank you in advance for your support. We have also been promoting this paper in many high level events uh, from the G20 webinar on addressing um, the climate crisis through culture, on, and that will happen on 12th of April. Um, uh, and this is sort of the, the G20, as you know, G G20 is chaired by Italy this year, and Italy is committed to putting, for the first time, um, bringing ministers of culture together, the G20, and putting this issue of heritage and climate action among the topics that will be discussed and, and sort of further action will be promoted by G20. Um, also, uh, the European Commission Cultural Heritage Expert Group we presented uh, this document and uh, um, uh, the committee meeting of the Committee of the Region on the 22nd of April. These are just a few examples. And every time when I was presenting these documents, I was most of the time doing it in duet. Because, of course, I'm so proudly presenting this document, but I want to um, uh, share with you a word of praise for the person who was responsible for drafting this document, who is the true um, sort of leader on this issue, and it is Dr. Andrew Potts, our American colleague, who is the chair of the ICOMOS um, Working Group on Heritage and Climate Action. Uh, he has been the man who has been uh, sort of steering this whole process and afterwards holding the pen and, and producing this document. And I'm once again very grateful for this um, outstanding sort of transatlantic partnership and, and collaboration. Um, I would like to say, so what are the plans? So what are the plans for the future? So the plan is uh, sort of to use this document, as I said, as, 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 um, as, as, as something that will help us mobilize, mobilize uh, stakeholders, and we want to sort of the, to, to create an informal European multi-stakeholder platform on heritage and climate action. Um, we will be working closely with our partners, and that's why we look forward to establishing a very fruitful cooperation uh, with, with all of you. And, and uh, we, at, at regional level, at, at a European level, and also at international level. I'm also proud to inform you that Europa Nostra has been selected by the European Commission as European Climate Pact Ambassador, with the task of informing, inspiring, and supporting climate action in our uh, community and network. And one of our main contribution is, of course, the European Green Paper and uh, its wide dissemination. The Green Paper is also one of Europa Nostra's main contribution to the new European Bauhaus Initiative, as I have already um, uh, mentioned. 
Let me see. Um, uh, and this, this, yeah, yes, I have um, omitted to, to change the slide. Um, and we are delighted to see that our mobilization is already bearing fruit. Last week, the Environment Council of the European Union adopted conclusions endorsing the new EU strategy on adaptation to climate change. And cultural heritage and cultural landscapes are widely mentioned at the point four. Uh, they're, they're mentioning that there is a need to adapt cultural heritage to natural disasters while retaining its values. There is a need for integration of climate resilience consideration into the criteria for the construction and renovation of buildings whilst safeguarding cultural heritage. And there is a need for disaster preparedness and emergency response. Beyond the European Union, we hope our Green Paper will inspire the work of other international organizations and especially the 2021 UN Climate Change Conference, so-called COP26, as well as the work of the G20 on the Chairmanship of Italy. I already mentioned this uh, a moment ago. Um, and indeed, the scope and messages of these papers are valid both at European and international levels. What's next? Dear colleagues and friends, as I mentioned before, the launch of our European Cultural Green Paper is not the end, but just the beginning of our collective mobilization. Now we shall use it to advocate together for a true global coalition for heritage and climate action. On, um, our uh, Green Paper concludes, in fact, our it went too quick. You, um, so just to um, uh, focus on this quote, you quote, uh, you see that quote on the screen. Uh, the vision is to help create bridges and cooperation across heritage, culture, sustainability, climate science, and climate action to inspire and stimulate new approaches so that Europe may achieve its green transition together. Together, we shall make sure that cultural heritage are duly included in the wider climate and sustainability frameworks at European level, but also internationally, as already mentioned, including the UN Agenda 2030 and the SDGs, and conversely, that climate considerations are effectively mainstreamed into heritage policy and action. Europa Nostra stands ready to be a forceful advocate of the Heritage for Climate movement and is committed to act as a bridge builder to achieve this ambition. The time for action is now. Our cultural heritage is irreplaceable and so is our planet. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Snieszka. It was uh wonderful and to a certain extent uh, for me heartbreaking the whole the whole story um, it's true that um, to a certain extent with this uh, presentation with this idea uh, one has to rethink the whole definition of cultural heritage we were used we are used to this old definition or old or definition that is quite, let's say, static, and uh, it's not about monuments or intangible or, or intangible. Cultural heritage is about our uh, daily routines also, and we and the history that is behind, and that uh, we somehow have to, uh, um, uh, with this embedded knowledge, we have to use this knowledge again uh, to to find uh, ourselves in a, in a better place or our children to be in a better place. And uh, what is also uh, crucial uh, on one hand side is that it's everybody's responsibility. S still, it's, it's very, very difficult because uh, uh, um, we, many people I think is rather uh, on the side of thinking that it's the global companies and 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 uh, firms or or global organization who has the power to change the situation, uh, and it's very difficult to to uh, assess 
where is this balance? Is it also my, my personal uh, responsibility uh, to go for a city break by uh, low-cost uh, flights uh, to a beautiful place and to um, uh, contribute to, to uh, um, not sustainable tourism? Yes, is it, this is all our uh, um, individual, individual uh, um, uh, decisions. In a way, those four, four, uh, um, four uh, let's say, uh, criteria or, or um, togetherness, longer time scale, culture of sense and stewardship, and embedded knowledge, I think it's something, it's, 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 it's a very strong communication and uh, uh, it, it, it shall be uh, somehow supported by everybody, by, uh, especially by cultural heritage uh, uh, people. So thank you very much. I don't see at the moment any uh, question on, the, um, on, on our chat. Uh, I, I, I suppose that it's just the beginning of, of, the, uh, <laughs> of the conference, so maybe uh, not everybody are used to this tool of uh, putting uh, um, questions or comments, but I do, I do uh, recommend this uh, this way. Uh, Lorena, uh, Lorena put a lot of links to in, in the chat. Uh, um, forwarding you to 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 the papers and uh, and to to to, uh, to all the documents you mentioned uh, in the in your presentation, I I can declare that we, that the Polish translation of uh, of this paper will be prepared because I, I fully agree that uh, that it, it's needed. Uh, in Poland, uh, um, there is a, a quite active group on Facebook, which is called Museums for Climate, and there is a, a, a very, very interesting group of uh, uh, museum people, but not only uh, uh, um, exchanging and sharing uh, experiences on the everyday um, uh, let's say uh, everyday uh, work, but also sharing the the, the research on the issues uh, related to climate and 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 heritage. Uh, so I uh, I um, I can say that there is a certain awareness uh, already within the within the um, sector. But I think, as you said, it's just the beginning of the process. Uh, I don't want to say that we. All, we, we are already delayed because probably it is like that. However, uh, it's, it's never too late to start. Yes, can I, can I react or do you have a question now? Or yes, while, we while have... waiting for questions, are there some questions? There, are, there is, there is a, a comment from Sonia Darrow. Uh, thank you so much for the talk. I look forward to connecting with you more on this topic and movement we have going to on here in Czech Republic. There was a great start of the conference. Uh, thank you, Connecting Heritage to Climate Movement. So, yes, I so it was... Yeah, yeah so I wanted, what I wanted to, to uh, emphasize uh, that I think that we have... Um, we have su successfully managed to put this issue on the agenda of European policymakers. Uh, because during the, uh, the, the la last year, which was the year of, of sort of rethinking, uh, uh, reimagining uh, Europe and our life uh, and our living environment, uh, we, while being uh, separated physically, we got even closer together, and the, the notion of togetherness. And, and we have really managed to get uh, and, and the top leaders of the European Union to understand that um, the green transformation is not just an environmental and technological transformation. It is fundamentally a cultural transformation, the transformation of our mindset, of our behavior, and of our way of life which is basically a cultural transformation. And that really, that breakthrough we have done in a sense with the help of the pandemic. This is very sad that we had to have such a crisis to realize how much we were all going 
towards collectively towards the suicide and towards the disaster. And so now we have uh, that opportunity, the sort of, uh, it's this one in a lifetime um, opportunity to reset. But it's a very big question mark. Will we reset? Will we really build back better as everybody is, is using that slogan? Or will we, you know, very quickly, because we want uh, quickly uh, on a short term to, to, to catch up with the economy and sort of start applying the same behavior as before. And that would be definitely uh, a disaster, disaster for, for the whole planet and for each of us individually. That's why, as you said, we really have to understand it's not waiting for somebody else to do it. It's every single person. And heritage has a fundamental message to pass in that. And, and there, I think we have made the sort of a breakthrough at the European level. But I'm not sure that we have yet managed to make a breakthrough really within our own ranks. I think still far too many people dealing with cultural heritage are uh, uh, somehow only talking about um, beautiful places. Threats. Yes. For, and, and, no, and also threats, oh, we are threatened, oh, help us, we are threatened by the climate change. But that's why uh, uh, sort of the, the, the game changer of our document is also not to speak about the threats, but to speak about the opportunities and to speak how much uh, a cultural heritage has to be um, a front line uh, in all those battles from farm to fork, when it comes to agriculture, when it comes to food, when it comes to sustainable uh, tourism, when it comes to energy efficiency. And not only, uh, of course, there is a tendency to say uh, always that we are on a defensive. And that is also what we wanted to change. That, that, and, 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 and policymakers tended to think, oh, these heritage people, oh, they are there that to sort of uh, complain uh, for, uh, because we are going to put solar panels, we're going to complain because we are going to put wind farms. Oh, they're really pain in the neck. Uh, what, to sort of to transform that attitude towards, uh, no, we are all for because we need, uh, like every single individual need the Green Deal to succeed. And if we want to save heritage, we need the Green Deal to succeed. But then we also have to say we are in it together with you, but you have to take us seriously and you have to take heritage uh, people uh, from, uh, uh, from the start as partners and not uh, say to us, no, we're going to put these wind turbines there and then we have to be the uh, sort of against. No, we have to be uh, sort of involved in consultation procedures. The local community needs to be involved and to embrace the, the, that transformation as something that is also their responsibility in their interest. So this is what is the sort of, I would say, the beauty uh, of our document. And I very much invite all uh, the people who are attending this forum to help us to pass that messages and help us in that uh, change of mindset also in the heritage world uh, in uh, in Central Europe and also help us uh, that uh, to, to pass these messages to your governments because as you know at the end it is the governments and in the, in the ministers decision. the council of ministers uh, are very important but also your your uh, members of the European Parliament your members in the committee of the regions uh, uh, liaise with them because we really successfully got the message. I'm all the time repeating a slogan. Cultural heritage is so much more than a sector. It is a vector for achieving strategic and urgent priorities of our time, policy priorities. So let's demonstrate that we are not just the, the trade unionists of the sort of professionals of heritage. We are the vector of positive change and catalyst of positive change for the future of Europe. And as you know, also recently, the European Union launched the Conference of the Future of Europe. We also ought to be at the heart of that debate. And uh, recently, we also um, launched on the 9th of May, we launched a call to our members and partners to organize in cultural heritage sites debates on the future of Europe, to show that heritage does not only outbridge to the past, but it's also our bridge to the future. Yes. So all these messages to say, we really look forward to working more closely to you. And also at the end, I also want to pass a very special message. I don't know if he's there. Uh, Professor Jacek Kurkla. Uh, he's very he's following, he's, he's uh, following. Very, him. very uh, a special greetings to hear him. Uh, he, we started together 30 years ago and Europa Nostra is very proud 
to have him now as our vice president. And we very much look forward, to, Agatha, together with you, with Jacek, with ICC and all the members of this forum and your formidable Central European network to sort of uh, uh, carry the flag of cultural heritage and put it at the heart of what Europe is all about. Thank you very much. We, it's, it's, it's like, yes, I, I do. I, I, I hope everybody can realize, as I said, about the, the, the skills of mobilizing, of Śnieżka's mobilizing people to, to act. It's, it's really something. And, and uh, I wish that kind of pandemic to be among us, that we are infected by such, uh, um, um, such actions. Śnieżka, thank you very much. There's, there are just... Um, um, uh, comments uh, uh, thanking you for this great opening uh, uh, and great start for the uh, for the conference and this positive um, uh, not complaining but positive approach to 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 those difficult uh, um, issues i'm i myself i have a satisfaction that we decided in the, within the heritage dedicated to heritage and development uh, invite you with this important uh, uh, contribution because there will be no development if we will not if we if we are not uh, changing uh, the um, our own behavior behavior towards planet and towards the nature so thank you very much um, and I hug you remotely and <laughs> and online I, I, uh, I want to also thank uh, everybody who are watching us. Uh, uh, we, will be, we will now have um, a, sh a short break. We'll start our next session at uh, 11.30. Uh, and uh, the session will be de dedicated to the presentation of HOMI projects, so how mega events uh, can be um, threats and can be opportunities for uh, uh, cultural heritage. Uh, Snieszka, once again, thank you and uh, hope to see you in person, not in a distant future. Thank you. Thank you, Agatha, uh, so much and uh, thank you for the information. It was an honor to be your um, uh, keynote speaker for the opening of this forum. I wish you every success and uh, I ah. promise, I promise to be back to Krakow very soon. Snieszka, there is one question. I, I think we, we shall, we shall I, I, have to, I have to ask you. There is one question from Natasha Uroszewicz. Do you think coastal heritage cities are more, more vulnerable and at risk from climate change and sea level rise? I think that the answer is obvious. obviously the obvious answer. Yes, obvious answer. Yes, yes, uh, and and we all know how how many how many uh, um, extraordinary what is the quantity of heritage and uh, that we have uh, on the coastlines. Uh, but of course, it's not only coast. Uh, the rivers. The we rivers. also know the risk of of, of inundations uh, that we have because of climate change. So it is not just affecting the countries. Uh, sort of the seaside countries, also the countries without the seas, because rivers are everywhere. We also have so many cities are by the sea, by the water, and so much of our heritage is in cities or rural areas that are located by water. So the, the rising level of inundations of rivers, this is a, a huge, huge um, a risk and threats to our heritage. A reason more why we all have to fight uh, uh, the, so the, the climate action, why we have to mobilize for climate action in order to sort of keep the, 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 the temperature rise as low as possible. Yeah. So there is, I think, no other questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Warmest greetings from today's very sun, sunny, sunny Krakow and, and, and see you soon. And uh, I say um, see you soon also to our, um, to our listeners and followers. We see each other at 11.30. Uh, so, goodbye for now. Bye. Goodbye.